Welcome back. We're in session two of seven now, which is understanding the basics. And we're going to look at the eight Ps in the session and the communication process of marketing. Uh, and we're going to use ADCAS. ADCAS is an acronym to describe the six stages of uh, communicating marketing or implementing marketing. So in session number one, we're going to be looking at uh, the business model canvas. It's a one page business plan, basically, uh, which is a lovely tool to have. In lesson two, we're going to look at the eight P's of marketing. You can see that we've got the four basic P's and then we've got the three P's for service and the one P called partnership. We'll go into that. And then we're going to look at an innovation model. Marketers need to know how to innovate. And which part of the marketing process are you going to be innovating? Is it going to be innovation in customer service or innovation in the product? And lesson four, we're going to look at ADCAS, which are the key steps to successful communication. Uh, the A in ADCAS, just a matter of interest, starts off with awareness. What, you, you need to make the customer aware of your product, first of all. Um, just two very easy uh, activities during the session. Activity one is you need to read and answer the medical aid mini case at the end of this uh, session. It's just a one, one page or one uh, slide case study. I want you to reflect on that case study. And activity two is uh, you can read uh, uh, the reading number three called Downswing Marketing Strategies. You can read it now or at the end of the session, but it will help you understand marketing immensely. Now, how do you grow a brand? This is a case uh, of a product in uh, Clicks and Discam that was struggling in 2015. And all that we had to do to make this brand grow by 30% per annum for five years in a row was interview customers and develop new features and benefits just on the label. So you can hear, see here in 2015 to 2016, the new label, that's what customers wanted. And then four years later, uh, another label was developed. And uh, this, this label has just been launched and you can see um, how many lovely new benefits there are on the label. For example, this brand became the number one brand in South Africa. So we put the number one um, uh, stamp of approval on it. We gave this product um, a name. It didn't really have a name. We also gave it a registered trademark, Nano Silver Repair 45. We gave it four new applications or treatments. And um, you can also see uh, a bit of subliminal marketing here, the, uh, the green cross is on both of the more modern labels. And um, in focus groups or in interviewing customers, um, this label could have also come out a winner. So if you look at the product on the left, how to grow the same brand by 30% per annum every year, and now we need to do it again. Um, we have what we do is we do focus groups. Now, a focus group is getting about four people into a room, showing them the old label, and then brainstorming ideas. So focus groups are used to brainstorm ideas. And then we do further research. We, do, we, we might interview 300 customers after that to find out if the label will really work. So here you can see um, on this label on the right, we've come up with a breakthrough nano formulation called Jewel Repair Liquid not just ordinary liquid, but jewel repair liquid. And that's what we often call in marketing a reason to believe why this product is good. We often call that a POD, a point of difference. So the label on the right has got a bigger POD point of difference than the label on the left. Now let's move on to a, uh, a beautiful tool we use um, called the business model canvas. Now, we need to be systems thinkers as marketers. The interesting thing about this, uh, this, this particular uh, business model canvas is it's got these big blocks. You can count the blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. And each block needs to be populated. And that becomes what we call your business 
plan or your business model to be more specific. It's a snapshot. And simple is better than complicated, especially when you need to um, uh, communicate what your plan is, what your business model plan is to the rest of the organization. But very importantly, the middle of this uh, uh, business model canvas, you can see the value proposition. It's the biggest block, um, arguably the biggest block, but it's the most important block because it's in the middle. Um, you can see that uh, the value proposition is the heart of your business model canvas. Um, the other big block, the one extreme right, is uh, you've got to describe your customer segments in there. Now, there I've put in three customer segments. Your most important customers, we call them primary segments. They also need their own value proposition. Secondary segment could be a completely different customer segment needs a different value proposition. So we, we've got there in red writing value proposition number two. And then your tertiary, your third most important uh, segment, we've called value proposition or VP number three. Now, this is where marketing gets a little bit complicated because we've got different segments and each segment would want a slightly different value proposition. Now, as many words or terms for value proposition, you can see them in the center of this box here, value proposition, or sometimes they're called USPs, which stands for unique selling proposition. Sometimes a value proposition is just called distinctiveness. It's also called differentiation. And my favorite is point of difference, just POD. What is your point of difference for value proposition? number one, or if you're targeting segment number one, what is your point of difference versus the competitor there? So right at the center of the business model canvas we, is generally where your eight P's sit. What product, what price, what place, or what type of promotion you can do, what people are you going to use, what processes, what physical evidence are you going to be using? And we'll look at those uh, P's a little bit later. So I don't want to go into the business model canvas too heavily. It's just a, a wonderful tool. Um, one has to be a systems thinker. And what this uh, uh, business model canvas does for us, it shows you all the different areas of your business, your cost structure, your objectives, your distribution uh, plan, your service plan. What are the major key activities you're going to be doing? What are your key resources? etc. And one of my favorite ones is the uh, the other big uh, block here on the left, your key partners, um, your your key partners that are going to assist you. I like that um, because it's your eighth P of marketing. What, who are your partners? So let's look at a bit of a case study. Let's say we had a shampoo and it had two PODs or points of difference. Um, and the PODs on the shampoo are protein inside the ingredients and vitamins. And this is what the product could look like. This is a product that I used in Iran and it said it had multivitamins in it and protein in it. And um, the interesting thing is your hair is 100% dead and does not need protein and does not need vitamins. Anyway, this is, um, unfortunately, marketing is sometimes unethical and it gives people things that don't really work. Um, three types of marketing. The, uh, this is an incredibly important slide because we all think the company must serve the customer. The company must serve the customer on the right. And actually what we're learning, especially this century, what we've learned is the company must look after the employees who look after the customers. The company doesn't really look after customers. The company looks after employees who look after customers. So it's important to realize that we need to look at internal marketing. Internal marketing is just as important, or what I'm saying here is more important. Number one is internal marketing is more important than external marketing is because at the end of the day, if the customer has a bad experience, it's because the employees gave them a bad experience. So uh, 
this, this slide shows you that at the center of a product is the real, real, real core benefit. When you buy a drill, you think you're buying a drill. You think you're buying maybe a battery power drill. You think you might be buying a drill with a spare battery. Actually, no, you're actually buying a hole. Now, when you buy a Kodak camera, you're not buying a camera, you're actually buying memories. When you buy red lipstick, you're not buying red lipstick, you're buying hope. And when you buy an MBA or attend an MBA, you're not buying an MBA, you're actually buying more profit for your organization or a bigger paycheck for the, the individual who gains the MBA. So it's very important. And I want you to now reflect on um, your business and what are you selling? I want you to think about what are you selling? If you're selling insurance, what are you really selling? So if you're selling insurance, what are you really selling? You're not sure it's selling insurance. If you're selling medical aid, what are you really selling? If you're selling vitality, what are you really selling? I want you to think about that. If you're selling hair gel, what are you really selling? Mm, maybe self-esteem? you selling? So what are you selling when you're selling insurance? I want you to think about that. Good. So these are the eight P's of marketing. I put in a ninth P. It's debatable what the uh, eighth P is. I like uh, partnerships as the eighth P of marketing because the world is so hyper competitive. We can't do it alone. We need to be in bed with the right partners. So in 1960, uh, Jerome McCarthy brought out the four P's of marketing. And in 1960, you must understand that the world was very different. There weren't many services then. Um, today, 99% of America's economy is actually service marketing and not product. Whereas China, on the other hand, is more product marketing. So the most important P if you are marketing a product would be product. The second most important P in general would be the price tag on the product. Now, once you've got a product with a price, you can start to distribute it, which is the third P called placement. So placement means channel to markets or your distribution um, uh, strategy. And uh, a very big one there is on-time delivery in full. Um, you can see it under column three, on-time delivery in full. Uh, another big thing under placement is stock levels or what we call inventory. And then, of course, now we've got a product with a price tag. It's, it's ready to be sold. And now we need to promote it. Okay. However, a company like a bank or a uh, medical aid um, does not have a product, believe it or not. We call them products, but they're not really, they services. And in 1981, Booms and Bittner came up with another three Ps, thankfully, because you really need them. So when you have a business like Discovery, you actually need the people P, because you don't have a product. The people are more important than the product. The processes are more important than the product. The physical evidence is more important than the product. Remember, if you've got a service, you cannot touch it. And that's why banks bring out credit cards, beautiful, beautiful things you can touch, uh, checkbooks in the old days, unbelievable websites. And then, of course, people uh, dressed in beautiful clothing. Uh, think of Avis. Avis don't have a, they do have a product. It's a car, but the real product is the service behind the car. And therefore, they're people. How quickly can I hire the car? Processes. When I return the car, the processes have to happen quickly. And if you had to choose between one uh, car hire company and another car hire company, their Toyotas are all the same. Uh, the one big criteria you're going to use to to go back to a particular car hire company is going to be the courtesy of the people, the swiftness of the processes, and the physical evidence of the people, the physical evidence of the chairs, the cleanliness of the premise, the staff prof professionalism, their stationery, etc. And then the eighth P of marketing is uh, partnerships. Now, of course, um, once you have a product with a price and it's ready to be distributed, we need to tell people about it. And I love this uh, quote coming up from, from Stuart Britt, 
uh, Stuart says, doing business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. You know what you're doing, but nobody else does. We need to tell people sometimes uh, that we are um, trying to get their, uh, their, their approval. And please, will they come and look at our product versus the competitor's product? Well, that's what we call advertising or selling. Um, so two huge questions in marketing, and I want you to reflect on this. We've got the eight P's of marketing here, product, price, place, promotion, people, our processes, our physical evidence or physical facilities and partnerships. But I want you to answer this big question. Why is positioning not one of the basic P's of marketing? Because positioning is even bigger than any of those P's. And I also want to ask, I want you to ask yourself this question. Why is profit not one of the basic P's of marketing? Because profit is more important than promotion or place or price. And I want you to reflect on that. So reflect on that and try and answer those questions. Good. So those are tough questions. Why is positioning, which is bigger than the other, the other P's of marketing, and why is profit not one of the big P's? Well, I want to tell you, if you got this question right, you are highly intelligent. Well, the reason positioning or profit is not one of the big P's of marketing is because if you do all the eight P's right, you will be positioned right. And if you position right, you will make profit. So um, the outcome of doing the 8P mix right, if you mix up your product, your price, your place, your promotion, and your partnerships, etc., right, the outcome of mixing up the P's uh, well is you will be positioned correctly and you will make profit. And we often refer to the eight P's of marketing as the marketing mix. Like when you bake a cake, if you forget to put salt in, your mix was wrong. If you bake a cake and you forget to put the eggs in, you'll have a problem. If you bake a cake and you put everything in except for the self-raising flour, your cake won't rise. If you have all the ingredients right, but you put it in the oven and you forget to switch the oven on, you also won't have a product. And that's why we often refer to marketing as baking a cake. You've got to get everything right. So... When we talk about promotion or advertising, we should really be calling it IMC. Now, IMC stands for Integrated Marketing Communication. And this slide shows you all the different, in all the different columns at the bottom, how many things you can do to promote or what we call integrate your marketing communication. And interestingly, I've, I've highlighted in uh, in yellow, the personal selling column, and I'll tell you why. Personal selling is your secret weapon when it comes to promotion for business to business businesses. B2B needs to be really functional, and uh, B2B stands for business to business. You're a business selling to, say, a broker who's another business. You need the best way to promote or communicate is to use your sales team face-to-face, -face, telesales, email them. We often call this key account management. And then in, in the columns, I've also highlighted in, uh, in blue all your secret weapons when it comes to B2B. Of course, when it comes to B2C, business to consumer, there are many, many, many more tactics we can use like in the first column, we've got advertising and your secret weapon there is above the line, ATL, above the line advertising. For B2B, we would use below the line advertising, like your product catalog or a product with your um, company logo printed on it. And um, so <clears throat> let's not go into too much detail here, but there's so many things you can do in B2B and B2C. And I want you to maybe press pause and study each column carefully. Um, look at all the different things we can do. We can be outdoors. We can do training of customers. We can write editorials. We can have product launches. And, um, and there's just so many fascinating ways to communicate and promote 
to B2B customers who are highlighted in blue here. And um, their secret weapon for B2B, business to business, is going to be personal selling and anything I've highlighted in blue here. The rest is um, uh, you can use, but uh, your secret weapon for um, reaching the consumer is probably going to be um, uh, advertising in the left-hand column, uh, whether it's print magazines or TV or radio or anything else in any of the columns. A big part of marketing is what we call uh, innovating new products or innovating new services. And um, the Dublin, Dublin Group's 10 types of innovation are so important. They looked at 35 years of um, innovation and they looked at the areas one could innovate in and they drilled it down to these 10. And um, first of all, you could look at your business model canvas and repopulate your business model canvas and innovate a better profit model on your business model canvas. For example, some companies um, uh, only worked through um, brokers and, um, and they made X amount of profit. And then that insurance company cut out the broker and went direct to the consumer. That would be a change in a business model canvas. Um, so you could configurate the way your business model works. You could find new partnerships, which is number two. You could network with new, new companies, new partnerships. You could uh, uh, hire a brand new sales team, which doesn't work for your company, but works for a, a third party. And then, of course, you could restructure your company to align your talents and assets in your organization differently. Um, so we, we often say, um, you know, if your strategy changes, your structure might have to change. Uh, the people in your company, uh, uh, for example, Unilever might only hire university graduates, and that's part of their structure and how they find their talent. Then your IT systems and processes, you could innovate there radically and you could think about your own organization. Have you used superior methods to do work? Uh, working from home, for example, one day a week might make somebody very, very, very um, uh, efficient and motivated and productive. And then the actual most obvious innovation is product performance innovation. Um, I showed you a product that wasn't doing very well in clicks and discim, and just by putting different points of difference on the label, uh, distinguished the, the product from the competitors. Or your product system, you could develop complementary products and services like Discovery as Discovery Health and a health bank. Uh, one of the most classic forms of product system development is the iPod also had iTunes. And uh, the iPod, you make X amount of money on the iPod and you then you make much more money on the iTunes selling music. Then you could also innovate your experience. Um, so uh, number seven is you could um, amplify your support um, that you're offering your customers and that could, could require a lot of innovation. How do you deliver your, your offering? Um, that's what we call channel innovation. We could um, come up with a new motivated sales team. We could uh, revamp your websites. So you do more online sales than you do offline sales. And then, of course, brand innovation, um, psychologically positioning a point of difference on your label, for example, um, psychologically positioning that shampoo earlier. Uh, by saying it's got four vitamins, which do absolutely nothing for your hair, but makes everybody think their hair looks healthier. And then number 10, customer engagement. How will you promote better than the competitor? Um, so lots of ideas. All those ideas, all 10 of them, could be your point of difference or what differentiates you versus the competitor. So the great consulting company McKinsey uh, brought this uh, model out to, to disrupt how your business works today 
Because if you don't disrupt your own business, your competitor will disrupt you and you will go out of business. And stage one, they say, is look at the lean process design. Lean means with, with minimized waste. And the way we do that is we, we generally do a bottom-up approach. Like I explained in uh, session one of seven, lean is starting um, with your uh, objectives of marketing and sales, the objectives, and then issues, and then the plan. And then we, we, we roll out those objectives, issues, plan by department to come up with our, our global strategy or our corporate strategy. Number two is you've got to bring in digitization, digitize customer experience, and day-to-day -day operations. Why? Because uh, digitize or often what is known as AI, artificial intelligence, is so much quicker and more accurate. Um, and so what is AI? Well, AI's operating model um, needed to simultaneously disrupt existing processes and drive value. Remember, driving value is what the customer wants and improve the customer experience while even reducing your costs. So, I mean, that's the best of both worlds. You reducing your cost and the customer's getting more value. Number three is intelligent process automation. We need to in introduce intelligent automation to replace human tasks. Of course, why? That's AI at its best. Uh, number four, advanced analytics, or what we call big data. Number four, big data analytics provides us with uh, the intelligence to make big decisions real time, not tomorrow, right now, we need to do something. And number five, drive the next wave of process, which is outsourcing or offshoring, because offshoring can be a lot cheaper than paying people in New York. And just as a reminder, why AI? AI is quick, it's agile, it can move Agile, why? Because it can pivot because of the uh, because of advanced analytics. It's very efficient, more efficient. It doesn't need to eat. It doesn't need a pension and a medical aid, and it's very very precise. So that's the that's the 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 new digital model, if you like. And now we're going to move on to a very very uh, um, um, interesting topic called what are the key steps in successful communication marketing communication and importantly here is the acronym ADCAS. Now very importantly here is we know we need to move from awareness, customers aware of you, to they insist on you and that's how ADCAS works. Now it's important to point out that the A and the I and the D are green here and the C and the A and the S are blue which means what? Well AID is marketing and CAS is what the sales team typically do in an organization. So, for example, marketing grabs your attention with hard hitting adverts and then they give you more benefits, which holds your interest. And then they might something will, uh, um, while stocks last, which will make you desire to really, really go out and buy that product. And then they say, if you buy, Two for the you'll if you buy two you'll get uh, one of them uh, for free and now you're absolutely convinced and you go to the shops and then you met with a salesperson who is brilliant they convince you further they summarize all the benefits and now you prefer the product so you've gone from awareness to oh I think I prefer this product and then the salesperson closes you they ask for the business that's called push for action the A in AdCast. And what's missing here is if you get bad after sales service, you will not insist that you want to use that product again and again and again. We're all aware of a certain brand of car, for example. Uh, but do you prefer that car to another brand of car? And let's say the awareness got you onto the showroom floor. The salesman sold your car and now you prefer that brand. Let's call it VW. You buy the VW. And unfortunately, you realize that the after sale service is not good. You will not insist on um, uh, buying that brand again and again and again. And negative word of mouth will destroy that brand because you'll tell all your friends how bad it is. And you'll insist that they don't use that brand. So if we put a bit of flesh on the bone here, 
um, we can look at some um, some some uh, a, a mini case study here. Uh, if you had to grab attention, typically you would use advertising. How would you hold interest? You could use social media and your websites and very interesting editorials. How can you stimulate desire? Lots of references on your website. You could talk about case studies where people have benefited. Um, you could have, if you in FMCG, fast-moving consumer goods, you could have a beautiful retail environment where people could come shop. You could train your customers. You could give them sample, samples, and now they desire you. And now it's easy to close that customer. The salesman can easily close because the marketing has moved the consumer from attention to interest to desire to gain conviction now. All we got to do is a bit of telesales or face-to-face -face selling and we can easily close that particular customer. We can close the deal, ask for the business and now we got to fully engage afterwards with frequent contact if you want to keep that customer. Um, so the S in service uh, is is really really important for the long term if you really want to gain um, the customer's loyalty over the long term we really need to work on that s the service now the last exercise i want you to do is to read through this ad case case study and uh, kick your shoes off relax go make yourself a cup of tea and come back and uh, reflect on why this is such an important case study this is a, actually a medical aid that i consulted to where they were losing a lot of customers and by stopping all their tv and billboards and radio advertising they gained a lot of customers by stopping all the uh, the awareness interest desire campaigns and giving that budget to their channel to market so well done <clears throat> end of session two of seven we're going to move on to the next session three of seven which is how to grow your business we're going to look at the ansoft matrix and uh, the marketing plan what is a marketing plan how does a marketing plan uh, look what are the stages of a marketing plan so um, good luck with that case study